Hi guys, welcome back to another Matchbox Garage video. I'm Rob, and today I'm going to attempt to take this 1962 C1 Corvette from shabby to shiny. Now, this is one of my favourite cars, absolute beauty, and in this style I just think it looks absolutely ridiculous. Now this is a 1982 casting, the year before I was born. So this is the kind of thing that I would have had as a young lad growing up. But it's got a chrome interior, glass is good, front and back, metal base with lots of detail. But it reads Matchbox 1982, then 1962 Corvette. Matchbox toys made in Macau. It's got some random placed flames on the side there. And then, although it's got red flames over it, it says blue flame on the top. So, okay, let's start by drilling down the center of the post, taking off the flange and then tap in the hole. I do this in my very handy vice. So this is one I did earlier. So the screw is already in position. So let's take it apart and see what we're working with. Like I say, plenty of detail in the bottom, and I'm definitely going to take the time to detail that out. So I'm taking these wheels off. I'm going to be doing a wheel swap on this car. So here's the interior, all in chrome, which looks a bit silly. So this will be getting painted. And I understand it being chrome because, of course, it's got the both rear and front bumpers, uh, which of course should be in chrome. The glass in good condition. I shall be cleaning that up later on. And then the actual car itself you can see there where I've done the uh, posts and that but uh, let's get the paint off for this so in a tall jar with some boiling water and I'm going to chuck in a couple of teaspoons of caustic soda So after a couple of minutes, I usually just kind of take it downstairs and rinse it off. But I noticed in the, this one that actually it wasn't so good. As you can see here, when I did rinse out the car in the sink, the uh, the bottom of the glass just popped off. Um, I think when it touched the cold water, it uh, pretty much just went bang. So thankfully, I wear gloves, eye protection, and so should you. Now, I actually added off camera an extra couple of teaspoons of caustic soda, and 
and it still didn't budge on this car. This paint is on there good. So I'm just going to do a different method with the paint stripper here and after a very short period of time the paint did come off of both the base and the uh, cast in here. Bit grubby but certainly the paint is off and it just needs a rinse. So I'm going to rinse that off and put the wife's toothbrush back. So now it's had a rinse. I can tell what I'm working with and I'm just going to go over everything in the wire tool just to polish it up nice. So now it's like the day that it was uh, made. If I was going to be doing some kind of like spectre flame or clear paint, I must admit I wouldn't have been too happy. There were some dark areas in the casting, but considering I, I'm going with the primer now, it really doesn't matter. So I use the Tamiya Fine Primer this is the white one. Make sure that you fully shake it up. Try and warm it up if possible. I just rub it in my hands just to kind of take a little bit of the cold temperature out of it. And chuck it on the car. I haven't yet managed to overdo this paint. I haven't managed to kind of put any runs into it. It seems... Um, really easy to use and almost foolproof. I always now go with just a single relatively heavy coat straight from the off and it takes all of a couple of minutes to dry off um, ready for top coat. So that's literally it. Nice and easy. Now I'm going to try again this. Now I was told it was pronounced Vallejo. Vallejo. Double L in Spanish. I should have remembered it's pronounced as a Y, but uh, uh, yeah, Vallejo Red. Now, I started off with a 2 to 1 uh, mix with the thinner, the, which is a Tamiya thinner. Now, I'm told you should never really kind of cross paints or cross brands, and uh, this certainly is one of those times. Um, it didn't like it whatsoever, and eventually, what I'd done was I pulled the uh, mix out and I went just straight from the bottle uh, the Vallejo paint and actually it went on pretty good so yeah it doesn't need thinning and uh, I just put it straight into my gun straight from the bottle eventually But here, I must admit, I've still got the thinner in. Um, I did leave it to dry. Just kind of just taking a, have a little look to see what it looks like. Hoping that it was going to get better. But after this thin coat, like I say, I did, uh, I did remove the paint from my gun. And just shot it straight from the bottle. And going forward, that's what I will do with this paint straight from the bottle. So you can see there's some kind of white spots there. Which I think it's where the thinner is separating from the paint. You don't see that on the final car. 
So here's the pace, and I've uh, done a wheel swap. I'm not going to tell you from which car, I want you to guess. I don't think anybody will guess where these wheels come from. You'll get 100 points if you can guess. But obviously, uh, you can see I've done a little bit of detail on the bottom there too, as with the interior. Painted it white, done some red centers, kind of took a little bit of the paint off as well to almost age it. Um, some chrome on the front and the rear, just with my using my chrome pen. And also kind of put some black inserts into that front bumper also. And I painted the bottom of the uh, bumper there just so that it was color coded once I put the top of the car on. Now, one of the uh, viewers made a comment recently and just said, why don't you decanter some of your pledge into a jar with a lid and that way you won't, you won't spill a drop. Something simple like that, which I just don't even think of, you guys are, are invaluable with these little hints and tips. So thank you very much to that person. Sorry, I, I get so many uh, comments every day now that um, I can't remember who did it, but if it was you, let me know and I can give you a, a special thanks. But um, going back to the car here, now I used my Tamiya um, mask intake and I thought it would be a good idea to brush on the white part. It wasn't. The white part on this car, unfortunately, looks bloody awful. Um, gutted, really, that I've put in all this time and effort and everything is 10 out of 10, yet the white part is a probably, well, giving it a 1 is probably, um, well, that's giving it too much, I think. But um, anyway, so moving on. Um, another comment was, you know, because I was struggling with the um, with the actual spray um, lacquer, said, why don't you just grab some clear X22 uh, Tamiya, and uh, well, that's what I'm doing here. I've done a 50/50 mix with the thinner, and um, I only. I only mixed up a very small amount and I put it on a very small amount and actually yeah it was very nice actually um, very good there was no no kind of pitting no orange peel um, and I will certainly do this again I think next time I'm just going to mix up a little bit more uh, clear and um, do a couple more coats I've done I think three light coats of this uh, but perhaps I can lay it on a bit thick um, or thicker uh, than what I did on this car but you can see that there's a couple of extra details there as well front headlights the door handles um, obviously the rear lights are already in red so there's nothing really uh, I could have done there but uh, and then the rear number plate too so this is just going over the bits and pieces here again now that everything is dry I'm going to put it together and uh, I don't want to spoil the surprise but let's see what we get so just a little reminder of what she looked like and the result I love this little car gutted about that side kind of uh, white part happy with the shape I thought that come out great all the little details the wheel swap oh. so look you want it to reverse off there but a um, few little touch ups there's probably more touch ups on this car than a high school dance but hey you know it's all about the learning but anyway guys thanks again hopefully I'll see you in the next one